Lance's new time trial position utilizes a far steeper effective seat angle than he has in the past. Uh, this shot from 2008 in the wind tunnel shows um, a position similar to what he's used for most of his uh, cycling history on the TT bike uh, with the, his sit bones located somewhere around the 72 uh, degree range versus his current position uh, which has his sit bones uh, somewhere around uh, 78, uh, more typical of a, uh, of a triathlon uh, type position, but also um, similar to the position we see a lot of the Pro Tour cyclists getting themselves in when they're pulling themselves way up on the nose of the saddle. We can do an overlay video here on the left side to compare these two positions, and it's clear Although the camera angles are slightly different, it's clear that the big difference here is how much further forward and up uh, Lance is now sitting relative to the bottom bracket compared to his old position. So this is rotating his, his torso forward. Uh, it's rotating his, um, his head down so we can see that as he pivots over the bottom bracket to the steeper seat angle and the uh, relatively higher saddle position, he now has a flatter torso angle and the lower head position relative to his back. See that the um, that he really doesn't look like he's increased his drop a whole much, a whole uh, lot more than where he had it in that previous in the 2008 picture. Uh, if you can look at, look at these lines here, he may be down a centimeter or so, but um, you can see that he's now got his shoulders uh, more on top of his elbows with the nearly vertical uh, upper arms. You can see an even more dramatic difference if we look at uh, the position he was riding at uh, around this time last year. Uh, I think he went underwent some changes during the course of the year, uh, but this position is where he, he was experimenting with relatively small amount of drop, gave him a more upright torso position for sure. I uh, see here the tour of California, he has pulled himself forward on the saddle a bit, so he's pulled himself up to around a 76 uh, degree position for his, um, for his sit bones, but if we compare that to this position here, we can see the, the dramatic change uh, in the, the amount of drop that occurs here at the elbows and the, the general rotating forward, up and forward over the bottom bracket. So essentially maintaining a constant radius around the bottom bracket and rotating his body forward, which allows him to flatten the torso uh, compared to this relatively upright position here and lower his head again uh, below his back profile. So reducing his frontal area and giving him a more more of an airfoil shape whereas this shape here looks uh, relatively draggy in comparison. You can see the change in, in the uh, steepness of where he's sitting. He is, uh, he's up a couple of degrees from this position for sure, he's up uh, again, probably 78, 79 once again, uh, as we as we note over there. And we look back here, and we can see that that even though he's pulled himself forward, he's still sitting not nearly as steep. Now, certainly, what one of the things that allowed him to um, obtain this position is the Adamo saddle, which we can see in this picture. Uh, Damo Road version, and uh, in the blog we'll go a little further into uh, into why that is. But essentially, uh, the Adamo is missing approximately five centimeters of nose, and uh, so when we're subject to the UCI rules where the the nose of the saddle must be at least five centimeters behind the bottom bracket, using an Adamo allows the rider to essentially recreate the position of having a normal saddle with the nose uh, directly over the bottom bracket. So therefore they can achieve this forward position uh, and, and typically a lower position in front um, 
because of the more open hip angle the forward position affords without having to sit perched way out on the nose of a conventional saddle